Okay, let's look for specific things in text. So find search match. There are three functions that can help you with this. And there's of course the find and select function within Excel. And we can start with that one. Just click somewhere and we have the find and select here and we can do find or replace. And I'm not gonna dive way deep into these functions because I think we know all these. But if we would look here for letter P maybe, and we do find all, then we get a lot of results here, right? In the worksheet. So we can click on it and then we go there. Well, that works, right? Okay. But now we wanna do it right here. Let's say that we want to find the letter P in the address. So is find P. And where do we wanna find that? Well, in column C2 or cell C2, and then we close it. And we get value. It's an error message. Why? Because there's no letter P here. If you look at it, there's no letter P. So this is the value that you get when it's not found. Now let's copy it. You can double click there. And we see here a one, a 10, a one, 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 one. Does that mean that this one has 10 P's in it? No, it doesn't mean that. What this number means, and it's really important to remember this because we're gonna use this later on in this video, is the position where it was found. So in the first position of this text, there is the letter P, and that's right. And the other ones have the same thing. So there are a lot of P's in the first position because it's all PO box, right? Okay, and here we have an exception because there is the letter P also, but it's now in the 10th position. So that's how it works. Now let's do the same thing here and let's just delete this one. And let's say that we are going to look for the letter A is find. And then we go to that one. I'm leaving this open on purpose, so bear with me. Now we have to choose, right? We don't have anything in there right now. So let's press F2. And then we want to find the letter A, capital A, 10, the 10th position. Okay, that's something we would expect. Now, for some reason, I mistyped something or whatever, and I'm typing A, lowercase, and we get this value error. Why is that? That's because find is case sensitive. So remember, it's case sensitive, so that means it makes a difference between lowercase and uppercase. And there's another thing, if we go back to the uppercase, then we only see 10 because that is the first one in this text string. Let's look here. There are two A's right there, but it looks from left to right. And the first A is going to get, that is the number you are being given. And that one is just ignored. So it stops after the first one. Now let's go to search right? Search is search because there's, there must be a difference, right? And maybe you can guess it. So let's leave it open again, just to make it more clear. We're going to select that one and we could do that with our cursors or whatever. And now I'm just going to use my cursor to go to the left and we see one again, because we do an empty string and it starts with an empty string. So a, this should give us 10, right? And it does. So that's the same. But now we do lowercase a, and it still gives us 10. So that's great. The search function is case insensitive. Just remember that. Now let's do the match function. What does match do? Okay, I'm going to scroll to the right a little bit. And we've got two names here. And we have a full name column here. Let's type is match. And now this function wants a couple of things from us. It says, uh, firstly, it wants the lookup value. Well, in this case, that is gonna be this name. We want to find that name in column E. The next thing is the lookup array. And that is, well, that's just search column E. So E, E, right? That's the full column. And the last thing is how do we want to search? Well, 
let's use the exact match. That seems like a good thing. We want to exactly match our text string to the other text string. And then close it. And we get number 9. So does this mean that we have a match? Yes, it does. This means that within our array, at this point, we have a match. Well, let's see that. Full name. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It's a match. Okay. Now we are going to look for a second one. So is match. The lookup value is this one. And then we still have to give our array. That is that one. And we are going to do a exact match again. And we close it and enter an A. Not available. It's not available. But it looks like number 10 is what we're looking for. Oh no, it's not. There's an extra A. So this is the error you get when the match doesn't find anything. It's a not available error. Okay, so now we know some basic search stuff. Let's do a combo. Someone asks you to get all the last names in one column. And what we see here is that every last name has a comma and then the rest starts. So basically what we want is all the letters from the left until the comma, right? Stop at the comma. We don't want the comma, but it's all the letters from the left until there's a comma. It's not really something that we can say to Excel, but we can use it. Let's start with the left function. So here we're going to type is left. And then it wants to know the text. Well, the text is obviously this one. So that's great. We're good. Um, but now we have problems. Because now it wants a number of characters. And in this case, it might be uh, a couple of characters. But in this case, it's more characters than that one. And that one is less. So how do we do that? Because we do want to copy this function, right? We don't want to type it all over again and again and again. Let's think back to the find function. Here we can still see an example that it gives us a number. It gives us the number where it starts. Let's try that. Because we can do a function within a function. So find. And what do we want to find? That's the first question. Well, the only thing in common here is the comma. So basically we want to find a comma. Right? And then within text. Well, it's the same field. We can just reference this field again. So it's E2 again. And then we close it and now we have to think because the number that we're going to get is the number where the comma is at and the left function gives us all the letters from the left or all the characters from the left until the number that is being given in this case it would give us the comma so we would get the comma and we don't want that so we do minus one minus one and then we close it press enter and there you go. But the big question is, does this work? We double click it, make it a little bit wider. And there you go, all the names. Take a good look at this function, how it works and why we do the minus one. And it gives you a lot of possibilities. Let's do one more combo. Someone asks you now to get rid of the uh, last name. So the result should be Kelly V, period. How are we going to do that? What do we want is the question. Well, what we want is everything starting from the right until we hit the space or comma. And I'm not sure here if there's a space everywhere after the comma. So I'm going to not guess, but I'm going to just use the comma, right? Because we're sure about that and we'll do something with the space later. So the first thing we need to do is start with the write function. And is write. And there's another video about this function, but it's easy. We want to start on the right and get a part of this text, right? This text. And then we want some characters from the right. Because the second question this function is going to ask us is how many characters from the right? Well, 
in the case of Kelly V, we can count them one, two, three, four, five, but the second one is already another one, a different one, and the third one is different, so that's not the option. What we can do here is be creative. There's another function that we've learned, it's called length. We know that length gives us the total length of the string. So let's do that. Length. That's something to start. And we want the length of this whole cell. Okay. Now we know that, for example, this is 10 characters. The whole thing is 10 characters. If we do this, write 10, then we get everything. So there's no difference here. But now we are going to make this smaller because there are some characters that we want to get rid of. And these characters, so we're going to get rid of them, is minus. And how do we know which one they are? Let's look at the find function. The find function gives us the position in a number. So the position of the comma would also be the number of characters right there. Okay, find. And what do we want to find? Well, we want to find a comma within text. This one again. And then we close it. It's the first one. And then we close the right function. And then we press enter. And there we have it. Kelly V. And now we just copy this function. And there you have them all. There's only one little small problem. And I'm just going to tell you how that works. There's another video about this functionality, but, and it's very extensive video, but this is something that you need to know because it all starts with a space and we can use the trim function for that. The trim function is the outer function and it gets rid of all your excessive spaces. So if we do that, we press enter. Now you see that there's a difference because this one starts with a space and this one doesn't. And if we do the copy, then you can see it. Now it's hard to see because we cannot double click it or something and to see if the space is really gone. But there is another way to do that. If I press my right mouse button now and I go back, then we can say copy here as values only. And now these are values, the functions and uh, formulas are gone. And now we can see there are no spaces except for the ones that we need. And that's it. So now we got the last part with the right function, find function and length function in one.